Pattern differences in uptrends and downtrends. And this is very, very basic, but I don't think people really key in off of this. And I know it's, it's very simple. This is my stick figure picture that I drew. And, but an uptrend versus a downtrend, the, an uptrend has the characteristics are 180 degrees different than a downtrend. Everything that happens in an uptrend is exactly the opposite of what, in, what happens in a downtrend. And you'll see when a stock, when a, when the stock, uh, a stock moves higher, it moves higher on higher volume. When it, it pulls back, it does it on lower volume. When it moves up again, the volume increases. When it goes sideways to down, it decreases. And this just continues on and on until the whole thing reverses. The stock starts down on big volume. It goes up on light volume declines on big volume again, and then repeats over and over again. And I know it's so basic, but if you can just identify the an uptrend versus a downtrend, you put your odds in the fa your favor of being on the right side of the market. And I, you know, I hate to say this is so simple, but the things I use in the market are very, very simple. I don't get into too many, you know, too many indicators. I just have a few basic indicators. A lot of them, if I was going to cut everything down, it would really say, you know, if I could add two things, it would just be the price and the volume, eliminate everything else. And I could probably do, uh, I do, do fine in the market. And here's a, here's a, an example. I, I, I wrote down these characteristics just so you can see the left side is the uptrend. The right side is the downtrend. You know, an up day, you have higher volume, down day, lower volume. And just, it's just the opposite on the downtrend. And then it, moving averages. Moving averages are in an uptrend and the price is above the moving average. Gaps occurring to the upside. Relative strength line in an uptrend. Group strength strong and other stocks confirm. Those are just basic principles that repeat over and over again. And it's, it's, it's so interesting, you know, in a market like this, when we're, we have, there's so few stocks that are in nice uptrends, people are still going, well, do I buy this stock when it's down 50% or 60% and said it, it doesn't have the characteristics that put the odds in your favor of making money in the market. So now here's an example of zoom video and you'll see the, you'll see the different lines I draw this, uptrends when a stock is in an uptrend and then it consolidates it, it, it drifts sideways and then when the stock moves up and goes sideways again you can see this over and over again but then when you get to the high at five five eighty eight the whole picture starts changing what happens is you start getting wedges to the right <clears throat> you get you get uptrends that are weaker and they're rallying on weaker volume and lighter volume You'll also see the volume spikes and the and the gaps start occurring to the uh, you know to the to the downside. Huge gaps in volume. I always key off of uh, volume spikes is when you get the biggest volume spike that has been uh, has been traded on the downside. To me, that's a big warning sign. And when you start seeing that show up, then it's then it's time for uh, you know the market probably going in the wrong in, in the different direction see and then in the stock has a you know it, it has a decent rally in here but as you start getting towards the end of the rally volume starts weakening here's another i mean the stock rallied from three to four hundred but check out the volume and that red line below my black bar is just showing you look at the average daily volume has really dropped off much much different than when the stock was in an uptrend the stock had rising average daily volume for most of the move and there were still big volume spikes coming in now the thing has really started changing and changing its characteristics here's another this is a little bit longer in the move you see the same thing happening weak rallies on light volume big gaps in price and then the thing just comes all the way down and even recently i could have driven uh, drawn this in but even you had another week rally at from 102 across, you can just draw those trends and the stock is, is still in a downtrend. So as I already mentioned, can slim, um, you know, the, the stocks are, uh, can slim is entirely based on past precedent. And here's a quote that I just took out of O'Neill's um, book. 
there's an enormous amount uh, that, you, that you will learn from studying these great historical examples. You'll see chart patterns that are repeated year after year with huge success. From these observations, you'll be able to recognize the types of price and earnings powers these stocks develop just before their spectacular price advances. So what you can do, and I always recommend this, is just always every year go back and study the biggest winners. Ch look at the different characteristics they've had and memorize those. Get those ingrained into your mind so you can recognize them when they come again. And even the four stages, and this is something that, you know, that Stan Weinstein's talked about, Mark Minervini's talked about, and very basic, but these four stages of a market leader repeats itself over and over again. This, this is Generac, which had a great move. And you can see number one is the base period, number two is the uptrend, number three is the top, and number four is, uh, is the downtrend. And so if you can recognize these different patterns that repeat over and over, son, it's, you know, you can get your, you know, get onto the right side of the market. And when it comes down to it, identifying the leadership in the market or identifying if we're in an uptrend or a downtrend is not that hard. But the hard part comes is when it comes down to you enacting this and being swayed by your emotions, going from fear to greed. And so, um, well, I'll get into that in just a minute. But here's here's one more. Here's all A's bargain again. I want to show this. It's showing this is the four stages of a base or four stages of a, of a, of a move. I highlighted all those huge volume spikes as the stock was building the base. In most cases, you can find that the stock, you know, the stock is setting up and you'll see these characteristics set up before the stock actually makes a move. And then I actually, you know, in my very basic uh, drawing there, there's a cup and handle within the handle. So you got a bigger cup and handle, then a smaller cup of handle forms, and then the stock just takes off and, and breaks out. And here's the move. Here's the up move, the stage two. Very same thing. I mean, I hate to be repetitive, but it's, it's, it's the market. It's very, very repetitive. Volume spikes occurring to the upside as the stock's moving out. But then as you start getting towards the top, things start changing and you'll start seeing on the right side of this chart. Look at look at how the 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 the, the red spikes actually start start dominating. You actually you even had a, a climactic move here when the stock went from the mid 70s up to the 90s. And it actually did it on some lighter volume. It really, and I guess you got a, a few good days there, but as you started getting to the top, the whole pictures just starts changing. And if you, if you can just identify colors, you're, you'll be on the right side of the market. Then here's, here's the downtrend and see the whole picture changes. Look at that 6.4 million shares traded to the downside, a huge huge volume and you can this even gapped before the the uh, the high you can uh, the the stock back in december before that 5.4 million shares traded the down so side it came back for one more little move but it really didn't have didn't have much left and then the whole thing started down so gaps in price huge volume spikes weak rallies on lower on lower volume <music>